automate security assessments of ICS platforms and environments. Uh, we needed to assess their built-in security mechanism uh, to develop security audits, uh, hardening guides, and automate the process as such. And in the process of our work, we came across lots of vulnerabilities which were actually sort of a waste produced in the process. We had another goal just for fun. We decided that if a, an attacker, for instance, an intruder, has all of this, can such a bad guy create POC of Stuxnet attack? And we used the vulnerabilities, we identified ourselves for, for this model. And our approach... So using the same approach for studies uh, in information security, and I think that after this presentation we can discuss your result when you use this or that approach or method. And I'd also like to ask Ilya to tell us about our main target. Hi, I'd like to tell you about uh, our main product of Siemens, which is Belkas and uh, SCADA systems. Siemens has uh, the following software for engineering, like Step 7, PCS 7 and Tier Portal, where PLCs are programmed. PLCs uh, are old lines, 200, 300 and 400 series and family PSC. Uh, but the main versions are WinCC for Windows 7 and WinCC Pro or uh, CE. These are the two main products of SCADA uh, which Siemens sells. <coughs> WinCC system has a server and client part. Even though the client uh, part it doesn't look like client part, it looks like uh, 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 the client, and it's not very much linked to, to the version of the software. It's as you can see here, what they use. They also have a web server so that the project we form on SCADA we could uh, reflect via web services. In this slide, you can see a typical scheme of how connection is made. This is how uh, LK and SCADA systems uh, are connected. You don't see various converters uh, and some um, other systems. Uh, but here you see how it functions. You see the server part and the client part of the system. And you see the web service function, which you can see via internet when we uh, uh, formulate all of this uh, in our internet. These are not very new versions of files that are being used here. Siemens is, doesn't issue them uh, very often, and here we make a file, a search, 
Here you see the pathway and we look at the date of opening SSL and we check the vulnerabilities of this open SSL system. And we see how many problems it has. In this slide, for instance, you see the files that were updated since WinCC system uh, appeared. WinCC 7 was uh, launched in 2008-9, uh, and there were lots of changes made as compared to the previous version. And then you see the files uh, and the date of their appearance. There are some files uh, which is up to 1.5 gigabytes big. And the question is, what do we do with all of this? Because there are different approaches, such as reconnaissance or whatever, but it all is very nice but very complex for us. And it's not very practical, that's why we prefer a trivial approach. Chinja is like ninja. Uh, our main goal was to break through by any method uh, delivery of payload. We needed we needed uh, to get uh, complete access to the system <coughs> to attack the physical infrastructure. I will tell you how we broke through. We had a choice. Client attacks or server attacks. And we decided study whether that was possible at all or not, to understand uh, how often we see an open access card systems and uh, whether any user can get connected to them or not. We got very big statistics, which you can actually download using these links, and we were surprised to see the number of SCADA systems in open access to which anybody can get connected to. To collect statistics uh, on client sites, we made a login uh, pattern, which got WinCC access and other parameters uh, which helped us to understand the thing. There were so many old versions of browsers and version and old systems uh, we couldn't imagine. In we got statistics for different bad, uh, companies from different industries. WinCC 6.x in 2012. I guess this re deserves special prize, really, because probably that was their answer to get protected against Stuxnet. What approach do you think we chose? The one who will answer first this question will get either a beer or exclusive t-shirt. Your answers, please. What approach did we choose? Your suggestions. Anything else? Other suggestions? Exactly. Please come up after the presentation for your prize. You are right. We decided to go each way. We took WinCC Web Navigator and we found quite serious vulnerabilities right away. It's path injection, path traversal and XSS. 20 genius XSS, which was fixed by Siemens quite quickly. But we go went further and deeper and we found even more serious vulnerabilities like a lot of XSS, CSRFs, a lot of arbitrary file reading, RFQL injection via SERP, and others. 
Okay, they fixed it. We found other vulnerabilities uh, in our third round. It was patch traversal and other ones. Do you think that's enough? Hi, everybody. Like colleagues said, we have gone the perimeter. We are inside the network. What do we do now? First of all, what are we interested in? In PLCs, and scan systems, panels, uh, engineering the service stations, and other things. How can we detect them? All good methods, SNMP, and we can easily understand what we have or MSSQL, other protocols can be used. But there are SCADA-specific protocols like Modbus and S7. We can also use them. Profinet can help you in MSSQL. So, a uh, 7 Modbus, we did this, we read the documentation for Modbus, we didn't find any documentation for S7, so, you know what we found? Modbus has a standard of identification of the device. We made such a utility, PLC scan tool, identify what the device we have. And you can see here in the screenshot. And you see here the version, the uh, uh, name and so on. With S7 it was more difficult, but finally we understood that they have a function which gives some information on the device. And uh, you see on the left screenshot IP and by 146, uh, in uh, another screenshot, you see PLC of 200 and 300 series, which gives you more information. But active scanning uh, is something uh, they can detect, so let's try to do it passively, but the same thing. So being in this one segment of the network, we can identify other components. We can identify them using Profinet. It's an industrial protocol which can work in different models and at different levels. In our study, we wrote a utility which can detect all the devices based on this protocol. It can be service stations, it can be PLCs uh, or HMIs. Or we can also find MAC address, uh, network, uh, addresses and uh, the role of this or that device which is implementing the Profinet uh, protocol in the net network. It all started with Profinet protocol and uh, writing this utility and later we found some interesting peculiarities of implementation of this protocol in Siemens products and we identified some vulnerabilities uh, which can be exploited using this protocol. This is a video of how the scanner works. We'll show it in our workshop and tomorrow. And we'll tell you about Profinet protocol also in more detail tomorrow in our presentation. Now I'd like to talk about the program part of it. The main element is graphic runtime. It's a loader and a network a file. We use RPC and spe special 
sections which are in memory map files for inter-process communication. TCP shared memory and other interesting uh, uh, tools are necessary for the attack. The main algorithm of attack can be the following. You detect active project, name, you find the database name in MSSQL, but you can use uh, standard uh, operating system tools to do so. The database name, there are actually two d databases. The first database name consists of hostname, project, and TLG, which contains tag data. The second database has a prefix of double C and project and timestamp, and contains information on project, project configuration, list of users, PLC, and privileges of users. WinCC account are controlled by user manager component which is standard it's stored in dbo.pw as you can see here privileges here non-existent and uh, users can uh, pick uh, any information they want from here and here you see that the vulnerability has has been already removed. Uh, here you can see that uh, you can easily see that uh, not being an expert. And you see here the username. The username is Avgur and Avgur too. So the name start, uh, of the database starts with the same letter as the username. Here you can see this is my encryption key, which is a hint. Who is the first to guess what uh, cipher it is? T-shirt or free beer? Oh yes, you are right, but not XOR, but triple XOR. XOR, okay, we have two t-shirts for you for the two first correct answers. Good afternoon. When I started SCADA research, I uh, focused more on uh, navigators and uh, tools uh, to monitor the perimeter. I was more interested in the algorithm of operation. I wanted to understand how the authorization for a web application works. I saw three main paths of authentication in the web server. Number one, selection from MSSQL database uh, via com objects. Path number two was uh, by a special Windows account and various shortcuts and even hard codes sometimes, but we don't know them yet. Another strange thing, authentication and authorization took place when one of the elements was triggered. So we get authorization with one user, there is data exchange, and then at a certain moment of time, the user name changes. You can see on the second screenshot. This required even deeper analysis of the whole code flow. And they do it in a very original way. First, authentication goes via an account in SQQL base. Then, via this account and the ISA component, a server ID is given, then some magic takes place, and we get access 
to the main component for uh, web traffic uh, uh, transmission to the web system. To hack an SQL server is too complex for me. Okay, let's use some anti-magic. Let's study what is this ID server, and you know what interesting thing we discovered. Server ID was base64, which was RC2 of a certain line, and the key was the hard code of one of DLLs, and they use this key in many other cases. So, as a result, we get something we will continuously work with exclusively and with a specific user created for this. That's magic. Life after magic. What happens after this magic? Like I said, all work with the main components of Web Navigator goes with this user. And they have a certain mechanism for different uh, authorities. But their mechanism, that mechanism isn't finite yet, and we have no right to completely disclose it yet. The work is underway, and uh, this nice uh, password, and it's MD5 from the Windows users, registered at SCADA server, and it's in the uh, registry, and uh, we... We cannot disclose it yet, and it has a good uh, generation set, but there are many things that make it more vulnerable. Some background, in 2006, some guy uh, mentioned that in uh, in an old filter, there is uh, some vulnerability in terms of uh, authorization, but they did ignore it. So, summary. When CC clients use hard-coded account to communicate with the main OPC web bridge component, why we needed this first uh, Password I don't understand. The password for Windows user is generated during installation of SCADA itself, and probably it is a strong one. MDP5 from this, uh, or when user password uh, is stored with DPAPI. And uh, this password is also used uh, when uh, making requests to WinCC WebBridge DLL. And at the workshop where I will make a presentation, you can learn more about the uh, core architecture and many other issues. Thank you. It's a very interesting auth authorization uh, scheme, but at least there are lots of questions about it. Let me tell you a few words about the project. We understand that ICS is, uh, and SCADA, uh, SCADA is just an environment, while the ICS is built based on the project developed for a particular production system. And our question was, can the project itself be used to attack the ICS? And it turned out that project files that suppliers and developers bring you, they cannot be considered uh, 
trustworthy. Why? Because the projects themselves are a dynamic group, and it's very easy to insert some malware components in them. Just imagine some malware code gets to engineering station, updates the project which goes to SCADA, and SCADA implements the code the uh, penetrators want you to implement. This is one of the vulnerabilities and you can read about it then. You will hear about it more tomorrow at Fast Track. So, how can a bad guy use order? If you press an HMI, uh, then some uh, malware code can be activated, for instance. And I can tell you that SCADA was very much appreciated by many other users. And now I would like to give the floor to Dmitry Sklyarov, who will tell you about our S7 PNC and what interesting things uh, there are about it. Good afternoon. Uh, these, uh, you know, what's interesting here, this looks like my armor blocks, but they were very simple, and the analysis showed that there was a secret uh, key used for all certificates, and then you see that... Uh, uh, there were conflicts uh, with various constants. Uh, Siemens was surprised how I identified this, how I found it. I said there was no magic, it's easy to find. Siemens acknowledged the problem and even promised to mend it in future, even though they would have to change the whole complex. Next question is how a user gets authenticated with the device. Uh, people stopped uh, using uh, passwords some 30 years ago, so now you can uh, just see what comes to the device and what comes back. It is uh, HMAP based on the SHA-1. The server sends us a challenge. Uh, we calculate the HMAP and we send back with the challenge. And this is how the whole authentication scheme looks like. And even CERT said that this was the good one we found here. After that, so we developed a module for John the Ripper. Now those who would like to find and uh, develop the uh, password uh, like this, uh, I guess it would be good. Authentication is very simple, it's challenge response. And to make authentication, you need to know the hash of our uh, password. So the question was, should we continue looking for the password or not? Because if you do have access to the uh, search, or you can uh, do the following, you can uh, openly send hash, and you can actually retrieve this file from the project file. Uh, and actually you need to get the hash from the password, which you can get without knowing the password, right? So even if we don't have any of this, guess why? 
Who guesses what we can do without knowledge of hash, password, yet a beer or a t-shirt? No, it's simpler than that. There is no hot code. Okay, you can do without cash, probably, but that's complex. Or should we wait for the correct answer? <laughs> there is a very, very... Very, very interesting part of our presentation to be made by Artem. Hi. What else can we see here? Somebody would say, but like Sergei said, one of the main reasons why we started this work was to get was to have some fun. So we decided, uh, decided to scan other portals. And we found uh, a number of, uh, a number of uh, vulnerabilities, like client type vulnerabilities. And we saw a site, Grip Injection, which was injection of MBSL code, which was developed by Steve for the mini web server. It makes it possible to write a JavaScript-like code. Without any authentication and authorization, you can use this code on the server. On the server. We sent our advice to Siemens. They quite quickly used a fix to fix all these problems. And also ICS cert issued the letter. And Siemens said that all these vulnerabilities cannot be remotely exploited only. Only like this. You will not see it right now, but we have this, uh, and later we will give them to you. And the last part of our presentation is creating scouts in. Well, during positive hack days, two new utilities will be published, it's Profinet scanner and industrial uh, protocols for pin testers and uh, version 2.0. For, uh, and other instruments and utilities uh, of security. It can be uh, and actually you can find this uh, if you go to this uh, link or you can find it on the website. And I'd like to thank all of you for attention. If you have any time for questions, we'll be glad to answer it. Actually, we have some 10 minutes to go. Any questions? If you have no questions, it means that we are even ahead of time. And those who guessed answers to our questions, welcome to the